I'm Chris and this is my how to wire a starter motor understanding the circuit troubleshooting video so when I was building this storage shed on my other channel homecraft go check it out this truck was stuck in the way I pulled the starter off of it and bench tested it and it worked 100% on the bench just a basic test we'll do in a little bit started three times and it went back to doing what it was doing at first so let's check this out So we go to start it and it's just gonna free spin. Listen to it. Let me do that again. So you guys that are new to cars, what do you think that sound is? It can be two things. Sometimes the pressure regulators will fail and they'll just fill the bores up with gas. It'll wash all the rings out. The engine will lose all its compression. It'll make that same sound when you start it, but you'll actually feel vibration of the engine spinning. So when we heard that sound, there's no vibration. The engine is not spinning in any way. That is the starter free spinning. It could be a bad solenoid. Let's go look at the replacement starter inside and figure this out. So truck is stuck in the mud. So I apologize ahead of time. We are not gonna be changing the starter out because look at this going on. The truck not only has the trailer on it, that front tire is sitting about eight inches lower than the back tire. This is not four wheel drive. This sucks. So on these older vehicles, you always kept a couple of part starters laying around. If you couldn't change a solenoid out, that didn't fix it. You would just go buy another one. They were $38, $40 for many years with lifetime warranties. And the older starter motors are pretty much the same size as this 8,500 pound winch. So the starter motors were bigger. The engines had lower compression back then. And what did they do? So on these LS motors, they put a puny little tiny starter on them. And in 15,000 miles, this is gonna be the third starter going on this truck. It makes no sense for them to keep going bad. Okay, so to understand the circuit, we need to understand that the starter is grounded to the engine block. There is no ground black wire run to the starter anywhere. Now, believe it or not, some people think that this is a ground right here. Going to the case, that's not a ground. So you turn your key on, goes through a neutral safety switch, right here energizing the solenoid. The solenoid runs electricity in a coil. It's gonna magnetize, shoot the armature out, engaging the Bendix right there. So as it energizes the solenoid, shooting the armature out, it completes this switch right here. That's how come it starts to spin the motor. So this is hot from your battery, energize the solenoid, connects a switch right there, spinning your starter motor, pushing it out, all of it happening at one time instantly. Let's draw some wire diagrams and understand how that circuit is run. So after we draw the circuit, we're gonna simulate the circuit with a real car battery and show you how to bench test your starters in case you're new or just getting into this car game because bench testing a starter is something that everybody that works on cars should understand at least how to do it so first of all this is not a test prep lecture video i'm not a professor this is not made for college kids or anything like that this is a diy video for guys and girls that are trying to figure out their starter motor circuit let's get started so first of all the starter motor does not have a ground wire this is not a ground wire it grounds by attaching these two bolts straight to the engine block. So we got these two bolts. So the engine block is gonna have little places to attach screws and bolts to, but on this particular one, it's gonna mount to the alternator bracket. So on this particular vehicle, the battery is grounded straight to the alternator bracket. This is a four American wire gauge. So the amps and voltage is just not enough to shock a human. So we don't need to insulate the path back to the battery so they just ground through existing conductors okay, so we don't have any wire grounding the starter so study your wire diagrams and if you're wiring a project up from scratch that's how you're going to do it run to your alternator bracket valve cover engine block somewhere right here we got the two lugs so remember one of the lugs goes straight to the starter this one right here is going to go straight back to your battery so then we got our little terminal s right there and to all the safety freaks out there they always have to point something out where the fuse is this is a fire hazard you don't know what you're doing okay no you don't know what you're doing this right here is typically not fused anywhere at all so don't get mad at me get mad at the engineers but i am going to show you where they did fuse so we are going inside the car to the ignition switch neutral safety switch and for all you fuse freaks out there let me show you how they do this so i mainly mess with gm cars are from about the mid 70s to early 90s a lot of them were wired just like this. 
So in the solenoid where you have the cable from the battery, they'll usually have a 10 gauge wire with a fuse link ran off of there to power the fuse box and everything inside the car. So then they would add a fuse link right there to protect the wiring inside of the vehicle. So then you have your ignition switch. They have a few different types. And then what so many people forget about, their neutral safety switch. This is probably one of the most overlooked switches of all time and people that are building cars forget they have one. So all this switch does is completes the circuit in park, neutral, or on a manual transmission car whenever the clutch is pushed down. I highly recommend if you're building a car to bypass this switch. So in your harness, you locate the switch, pull the plug off, and then you're gonna put a little jumper wire in there just while you're building your car because you will forget about it and it can cause you all kinds of headaches. Turn the key, nothing happens. Turn the key, nothing happens. Trust me, been there, done that. So then on the cars I mess with, they have a 10 gauge purple wire. So we got the 10 gauge wire coming in, run through an ignition switch, run through a neutral safety switch, then goes back out there to S on the starter. Now for the safety freaks, they have another fuse link right there. It's supposed to, a lot of times those will be cut out or missing. So if your car is in park or drive, you turn that key, power runs through it, goes to the solenoid. So whenever you energize the solenoid, it runs electricity in a coil, magnetizing the center, magnetizing a piece of iron that's attached to this rod. So another thing that's happening is whenever you engage the solenoid and it shoots the arm out, it's connecting this switch right here. It's all happening at one time. So when it connects that switch, then your motor starts spinning, spinning this little Bendix. And this Bendix is the gear that engages the flywheel. And there is a really good video on YouTube. It's some kind of instructor that has the cutaway. It really shows you everything a lot more in depth than this video does. But what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to set up your little bench tester with a normal battery. So learning and having the stuff to bench test a starter is very important when you work on cars. Places like an O'Reilly can actually test them for you, but it's better to do it yourself because you want to try to simulate the actual circuits in your car. Okay, so in case you didn't have anything laying around, for about $25, you can build your own setup to test starters. Now, the cars I work with are all pretty much the same, so we simulate a general wire size that works pretty much for everything that I own. So we got our positive number four wire. This is our momentary starter button, just like in a car. And then this is our simulated neutral safety switch. We're in drive right now. We're gonna have to make sure it's in park to complete that circuit. So be careful if you bench test, the last thing that we do is hook the negative post up right here. So remember we got the two posts. One goes to the starter motor, the other one goes straight to the battery, just like the wire diagram. Okay, so then this is coming out of the fuse box, ignition switch, neutral safety switch, Remember, connected to the little one for S. So for the fuse people, that's how your feasible link is gonna look like. It's just a section of undersized wire, usually about two sizes, and it has that thick plastic because if this starts to short out somewhere, it's gonna heat the wire up, it's gonna melt this before it melts that. And this thick plastic is there to protect it and insulate while it burns that little piece up. So we need to hook up the negative side Remember, there is no wire grounding the starter out, so we ground to the case right here. So whenever you're working on cars, you always have a wire brush and buy one of these goofy things in the battery sections, okay? It's a combo post cleaner, terminal cleaner. I always check these posts out if you're having any type of starter trouble. Dirty terminal right here, bad connection right there can give you all kinds of false readings waste you a whole bunch of time and money. I would get in the habit of doing them like this because at O'Reilly, they're just gonna clamp like a battery uh, jumper cable thing to it to test it, which it should be the same, but this is actually wired just like it is in the truck. And another bit of advice is go ahead and buy your new starter if you're in doubt about yours. A starter motor is not electronic. This is electric, but it's mechanical electric Meaning that if it's not the starter problem, you can return this without any problems. It's electronic parts you cannot return. I'm just saying that because they bench test this starter before they put it in the box anyway. You need to hear what a good healthy starter sounds like 
before you go troubleshoot yours in case it's bad. All right, so obviously we need a good healthy battery. You're gonna hold this down super tight because it can jerk. This might freak you out at first, but you have nothing to be scared of. So this is a momentary button. So when we push it down, it's like yank, 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 yank when we crank our car. We're gonna energize the coil at the same time we're connecting this power. It's gonna shoot the armature out and the little Bendix is gonna spin. So we're talking about how important that neutral safety switch is because a lot of people have it off or in drive. When you're working on your car and you don't know, you go to start it, nothing. Ah, oh, we need a new ignition switch. So we find the neutral safety switch and just click it in drive or park or bypass it with the jumper wire. And now when we go to start our car, And that's what a healthy starter sounds like. So if you're bench testing them, always feel the wires, feel this stuff, kind of get an idea of the temperature. If it's gonna get hot, nothing feels hot, everything feels good. But the key here is to simulate the starter circuit in your vehicle exactly. Same gauge wire, same gauge wire, and that way you'll know when you test that starter, stuff will start getting hot, stuff won't feel right, but just be careful we're working with straight power off the battery and this thing can start sparking and arcing and doing all kinds of crazy stuff so be careful if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and thanks for watching